you. And I'm like, didn't you see me pointing this weapon at you? Don't you know I could have shot you? And the man looks at me, and he, you know, he's speaking broken English. His English is very broken. He looks at me with a smile on his face, and he points his finger to the sky like this, and he says, I only fear Allah. up I grew up in a black household you know uh, we used to go to church every Sunday uh, so the missionary Baptist Church you know uh, the church where you know they got a hoot and holler for God and uh, singing kinds of songs and people speaking in tongues you know it was always a good time at church you know we'd be there all day on a Sunday but it was a good time uh, one summer my mom put me on like she locked me down the whole summer like I couldn't need a house I was on punishment you know and in doing that, uh, stuck in the house, I didn't have much to do. So what I would do was uh, I would watch all her old video cassettes. This is back when they had the VHS, the VCR player, you had to press rewind, all that old stuff. Anyways, I came across this movie, um, it's called Malcolm X. And I heard about Malcolm X, but you know, in school, in public school especially, they don't teach you a lot about Malcolm. You hear a lot about Martin Luther King, all these other people, you know, the more, uh, the more pacifist, you know, activists and things like this. But I never really learned much about uh, Malcolm X. So I remember looking at this video because I'm like, man, this is a lot of videos. Two videos. Like, this is a long movie. So anyways, I uh, pop it in or whatever, and I watched it all the way through. I think it's about two and a half hours maybe all the way through. And I remember at the end of that video, I was a little bit left in shock, you know, because the whole concept behind Malcolm is that Malcolm, uh, he was never really a Christian, but, you know, he did all of his work in the name of Allah, you know what I mean? And he did his work in the name of helping people, benefiting them. And at the end of the day, he was Muslim, you know? But the problem was, was that, for me, was that as a Christian, I had learned that if you didn't accept Jesus into your life as your Lord and personal Savior, you was going to hell. Well, I looked at Malcolm and I said, well, Malcolm believed in God. He believed in all these different, you know, he believed in God. But he's going to go to hell because he didn't believe in Jesus the way I believe in Jesus. And to me at the time, that didn't make sense, you know what I mean? I didn't want to go to college. I knew I didn't want to go to college, but I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to get out of here. I knew I had to get out of the city. So I ended up joining an army. I joined an army in uh, 2008. Yeah, about two weeks after I graduated, I was in the army. Two weeks after I graduated from high school, I was in the army. And the military was a very interesting experience because in the military, you're not paid to think for yourself. They do all the thinking for you. They tell you where and where to go. They tell you to do this, they tell you to do that. Everything is already planned out for you. One day I'm guarding this gate. Uh, you know, I'm armed up with my weapon guarding this gate. And this truck approaches. And the truck approaches and it gets closer to the gate. And I'm telling the truck to stop. I'm, I'm saying, stop, 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 stop. Telling the truck to stop. The truck stops, the driver gets out, and he starts walking towards the gate. Well, I tell him, I say, you have to stop. You know, I'm yelling at him, stop, 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 stop. And the whole time he's coming at me, he has this smile on his face. So I'm thinking in my head, this man is crazy. This man is loony. He's out of his mind. I don't know what's wrong with him. Anyways, he continues to come closer and closer and closer. And by this time, I've pointed my weapon at him. I'm telling him I'm going to shoot and all this stuff. But something was telling me not to shoot. Something was telling me not to pull the trigger. So I didn't. And what happens is that he approaches me. And from his underarm, he produces his paperwork, telling him that it was okay for him to get in the gate. Well, in the conversation that I'm having with him, I'm telling him, you can't come into the gate. You're not welcome in the gate. And I'm like, didn't you see me pointing this weapon at you? Don't you know I could have shot you? And the man looks at me, and he, you know, he's speaking broken English. His English is very broken. He looks at me with a smile on his face, and he points his finger to the sky like this, and he says, I only fear Allah. And in my head, I'm like, all right, dude, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you got problems, you know what I mean? You can't, you out here defying guns and stuff. No, you, you're tripping out, whatever, right? So what happens is, is that I come back out to California about October of 2011, and then I took my Shahada at uh, Farouk because I knew a guy that actually was going there at the time that I had met through some other friends that was going there at the time. And he invited me to come through and, and take my Shahada. And, you know, one thing that I would say to everybody that's watching this or, you know, to anybody that's interested in Islam is do not hesitate to be to go out and, and do the research and, and visit a masjid. You know what? I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, it may be a little strange at first. Obviously, it's going to be strange. You're, you're doing something new. You're, you're, you're looking into something that, um, that might potentially change your life. And it's a bit overwhelming at first. And sometimes the thing is, is that sometimes when we discover the truth, we try to run away from it because we don't want to believe it. But the problem is that the truth, you can't run away from the truth forever. It's always going to be in the back of your mind. You know, and sometimes when people discover Islam, they, they look at it and they say, no, this can't be true. 
they are they are they think it, they know it's true, but they back away from it because they're scared of the truth, you know. And in that sense, you have to understand is that yes, the truth is a little bit scary sometimes, but it's still the truth, you know. And in doing that, don't be afraid to go and visit uh, a mystery. Don't be afraid to talk to you to the Muslims that are around you. Do not believe what the media is telling you. That's rule number one. Don't believe what the media is telling you. Don't let anybody tell you that ISIS, the Taliban, represents Islam. Because if that's the case, then the KKK represents Christianity. And everybody knows that's not true. So don't let anybody tell you what Islam is until you go out and you do it for yourself. Research it for yourself.